Good night, and welcome to Change Life Deaf Church Bible Study. We're so happy that you've joined with us tonight, and we hope that your knowledge about God and His ways would increase every week. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time together. We pray that your Spirit would touch our hearts and minds and help us to have soft hearts an open mind to receive from your word tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight we start chapter 15 of Mark's Gospel, verses 1 to 20. And the topic is Jesus' trial with Pilate. And who is that? The man's name He's the Roman governor, and he has a trial in front of Jesus because the Jews could not kill him themselves. They had to go to the Roman governor and ask him to condemn Jesus to death. So they finished their own trial, and they went all together and brought Jesus with them in front of Pilate. Let's see what happens. Verse 1. Very early in the morning, the leading priests, the older Jewish leaders, the teachers of the law, and the whole high council, decided what to do with Jesus. They tied him and led him away and handed him over to Governor Pilate. Now Pilate was friends with Herod's son. So he wasn't that good of a person, but the account of the other Gospels say that his wife had a dream about Jesus, and his wife was very upset and told him not to touch this man. So Pilate was actually trying to free Jesus from the Jews, but they began to protest against that. So he finally decides to kill Jesus. Verse 2. Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Yes, that's right. So now this is the second time that Jesus admits that he is the king of the Jews. He upset already the Jewish leaders by saying he was the Son of God and which gave them a reason to kill him. And now he says, I am a king before Pilate. And Pilate knows that Herod is paranoid about another king. So Pilate is thinking a new king, he doesn't look like a king, he looks like a poor person. So Pilate was a little confused about Jesus. Verse 13. The leading priests accused Jesus of many things. Just like at their own trial, they came up with lots of things, like he changed the law, doing things against God, all sorts of things. 
and Pilate is listening to all this and saying, What? I thought there was some crime against people. This is about your own religion. So he didn't want to decide. Verse 4. So Pilate asked Jesus another question. He said, You can see that these people are accusing you of many things. Pilate was used to people saying, I'm not guilty, and complaining about their treatment. But Jesus, Pilate was really amazed. He couldn't understand why Jesus didn't try to defend himself. Verse 5. But Jesus still did not answer, and this really surprised Pilate. He was shocked. Jesus didn't say anything for himself to defend himself. So he didn't know what was happening. He was very confused about Jesus. Verse 6, every year at the Passover time, the governor would free one prisoner, whichever one the people wanted. Pilate had an annual freeing of one person in prison, whichever one the people wanted asked for, free that person, Pilate would say, okay. So now he brings it up again to do that same thing about Jesus. But who else? Verse 7. There was a man in prison at that time named Barabbas. He and the rebels with him had been put in the prison for committing murder during a riot. So this man was in prison, accused of killing people. And Pilate said, Surely they will choose Jesus over this man, a murderer. Verse 8. So the people came to Pilate, and asked him to free a prisoner, as he always did. So now the people are asking Pilate, it's Passover time, please free a prisoner, the one we ask for. So Pilate says, okay, sure, surely they're going to choose Jesus. I can't find anything wrong with him. Certainly we're going to free him. Verse 9, Pilate asked them, Do you want me to free the king of the Jews? So Pilate brings up Jesus. Shall I free him? He's a prisoner. Now watch. Verse 10, Pilate knew that the leading priests had handed over Jesus to him because they were jealous of him. Jesus seemed to have taken up more authority than the Jewish leaders, and they didn't like that. They thought, him above us? People think he's better than us who've gone to school and know the law and teach the people. We're more important. And Jesus thinks he's more important. So they were jealous about Jesus because of his many followers listening to his teaching. 
So Pilate's understanding this. He's trying to find a way to free Jesus. But the leaders, the priests, the Jewish leaders, they've already decided to kill Jesus. Verse 11. But the leading priests persuaded the people to ask Pilate to free Barabbas, not Jesus. So now, the Jewish leaders, they were in the crowd and they told the people, ask for Barabbas, ask for Barabbas. And the people said, okay, okay, okay. Because they were afraid of the Pharisees. They had a lot of authority. And the people just listened to them. So ask for Barabbas, not ask for Jesus. Leave him alone. Verse 12. Pilate asked the people again, So what should I do with this man that you call the king of the Jews? Pilate was hoping that the people would say, wait, 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 he is the king of the Jews. Okay, let's free him. Pilate was hoping for some way that he didn't have to kill Jesus, especially because he couldn't find anything to accuse him worthy of death. Let's see what the people want. Verses 13 and 14. The people shouted, Kill him on a cross. Pilate asked, Why? What wrong has he done? But the people shouted louder and louder, Kill him on the cross. Crucify him. Pilate was shocked. He was wondering what to do. He sees the people getting upset. He knows that the Jewish leaders, the Pharisees, have stirred them all up. And they were ready to riot. So Pilate says, okay, calm down. He quiets the people. In verse 15, Pilate wanted to please the people. So he set Barabbas free for them, and he told the soldiers to beat Jesus with whips. Then he handed him over to the soldiers to be killed on a cross. Now we see Jesus is finally condemned to die on the cross. And now nothing can change the events. No begging, no crying can change this decision. So he's surely going to die on the cross. Verse 16. Pilate's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's palace, called the Praetorium. They called all the other soldiers together to look at Jesus. And what did they do? Verse 17. They put a purple robe on Jesus and made a crown from thorny branches and put it on his head. Now why? Purple. Many kings wore purple to show that Jesus was a king, they put a purple robe on him. It wasn't actually to honor him. They put a crown of thorns 
on his head. Verse 18 Then they began shouting, Welcome, King of the Jews! You see, the soldiers were making fun of Jesus. Welcome, King of the Jews! They thought it was funny to make fun of Jesus. They weren't really honoring Jesus with the purple robe, with the crown of thorns. It showed that they were making fun of him. Verse 19. They kept on beating his head with a stick and spitting on him. Then they bowed on their knees and pretended to honor him as a king. The soldiers made fun of him by pretending in front of Jesus. Now they, in the past, when they beat a prisoner, the prisoner would scream and holler, cry because of the pain, but Jesus was quiet. But they didn't care. Maybe a few of the soldiers were curious as to why he wasn't angry and didn't curse them. But Jesus said nothing to them. Verse 20. After they finished making fun of him, they took off the purple robe and put on his own clothes on him again. Then they led him out of the palace to be killed on a cross. So that's the story. Jesus is on his way to the place of crucifixion. It was outside Jerusalem, not inside Jerusalem. The Jewish law forbade anyone from being killed on a cross inside Jerusalem, so they had to go outside to a place, a little hill outside Jerusalem. So the soldiers led him away. And the Jewish leaders they were approving. Now some of the people, they remembered what Jesus did, that he was good, he talked good, and he taught good, and they were beginning to think they had made a mistake. But again, nothing could change it. It was going to happen, and we're going to see that in the next part. So what can I learn? From this story. Number one, the story shows complete rejection of Jesus. Nobody was with Jesus at the end. None. Remember, in the garden, Gethsemane, all his friends, the twelve, they left him. They left him alone. There was no one with him to help him, to defend him. At the trial in front of the Jewish leaders, and then in front of the Roman governor, the same thing. No one, there was no lawyer with him. It was just Jesus himself alone. And now the soldiers also reject him. Now this has happened ever since. Everyone was against Jesus. It happens today also. Many people are against Jesus. Oh, they have the idea about Jesus. He was a nice man. It was not right to condemn him to die on the cross. But Son of God? 
the true Messiah, the Savior of sinners, able to forgive sins? No. They reject Jesus even today. They'll accept anything else, but Jesus they reject. That's why we have so many different religions, so many different ideas about how to worship God, how to connect with God, because they reject Jesus. Number two, many people pretend to honor Jesus. We see on TV and YouTube, we see many big churches, thousands of people going. But how many are truly honoring Jesus? I'm thinking, is it possible? It's easy to go to church. It's easy to say, yes, I believe in Jesus. But to really honor Jesus with my life, showing His goodness, His kindness, His actions. My words showing His words. That's what we need to do. Just like the soldiers, they made fun of Jesus. Today, people make fun of Jesus. We see it on the internet. Many pictures, jokes about Jesus, showing Jesus that they don't honor him. So let us think we need to honor Jesus truly, that our lives would be along, alongside of him. Let God change our hearts and minds and actions that we honor Jesus. Number three, Jesus rejected. Why? Because he is right. Too many people reject Jesus simply because he's right. They say, oh yes, I want to do right, think right in my heart, but they reject Jesus. Saying that he didn't say that or didn't do that. He didn't die on the cross for my sins. No. They reject him because he's right. It's the same today. They reject him because he's right. And they'll reject you and me if we tell them what is right. If we tell them what's in the Bible. Because that's right. And people will reject. They don't want to hear about right anymore. They don't want to hear. They only want to hear what's fun, what makes them feel good, what's pleasuring to them. They reject anything that would stop them, make them feel guilty. Many things that Jesus said, his life itself, that makes them feel guilty. They know I'm not the same as Jesus. I'm much less than him. My life is not the same. I know I should be better, but I can't. I keep doing wrong. So they reject Jesus. They reject Jesus. Why? They don't know that he will give them the ability to do right. They forget that he promised the Spirit to give to every person in their heart to change us, to make us do right. Number four, God gives us a choice to choose good or bad. 
Just like Pilate, he offered the people a choice between Barabbas or Jesus. Which one do you want? The people, they chose a killer, Barabbas. He wasn't a good person, and they rejected Jesus, who was a good person. They chose wrong. They chose the bad. God is offering you and me the same choice. There aren't three or four or five choices, just two. Good or bad. Either Barabbas or Jesus. Pilate offered them just two thinking surely, for sure they'll choose Jesus. He's a good person. But they didn't. The people chose Barabbas. And he was not a good person. So I'm suggesting to you to make a choice. It's the same choice. Either the devil or God. Which? You have a choice. You need to know which. Your choice determines your eternity. There are only two choices, not three or more. The devil's way or God's way. The Bible calls it the world's way. The world is controlled by the devil. In the movies, in the government, in business. More and more evil is piling up. We need to make a choice. Which one? Which one do you choose? God or the devil? Which? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time together in your word. We pray that you would help us to make a choice, to choose you. Give us a new heart a new life. We pray that our minds would be made up and decide, not waver in between two, some bad and some good. We pray that you would change us and make us all good through your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask in his name, amen. Okay. I want you to think about what I said. Don't watch and say, oh yeah, fine, nice, and then forget. Our time here on earth is very short. We think we have a lot of time. We're going to live a long time, but it's not true. It's very short time. Each person has an appointment, a day to die. And then what? Judgment. And we need to know which are we going to be with, the devil or God. Which? Tell me what you think. Please give us a thumbs up, share this video, and push the subscribe button. Let us get this out to many deaf so that they learn about God also. God bless you. We'll see you again next week, same time, 7.30.